name is David Grant, and I'm mayor of Arden Hills, and I'd like to welcome you here. We have an exciting program. Our city is uh, really busy, uh, more busy than perhaps a city of its, its size. And uh, we have a number of presentations uh, that will be made by council members as well as the uh, chair of our Economic Development Commission and also uh, a presentation from the Arden Hills Foundation. Uh, a couple of uh, opening comments. Uh, we got some good news from uh, Ramsey County just recently. Uh, in May of this year, median home values in Arden Hills increased to 257,500, or from 257,500 to 264,000, yeah, I'm sorry, to 264,000 uh, 700, and that's an increase of 2.8 percent. And as you know, ho housing is uh, over the last few years has kind of taken it on the chin financially. So it's good to see that our home values are increasing uh, on average 2.8 percent. The county average is point, uh, 0.2, so we've increased uh, four 14 fold on that. Uh, other news uh, relative to the to the city and our costs and is that the public safety costs uh, are increasing uh, by sixty seven thousand one hundred and seventeen dollars uh, primarily for the uh, fire contract uh, sixteen thousand four hundred sixty five dollars that's a three point nine seven percent increase uh, approximately four percent. Uh, the sheriff's contract includes animal control, except for the Hillcrest Animal Hospital uh, charges, uh, which are $41,067, that's a 4% increase. And uh, 911 dispatch services also make up a large percent of, of that increase, uh, $8,285 or almost 16%. So. Our costs are going up, but the good news is that our housing values are also going up, and I assume that commercial property is also appreciating as, as well. At this point, I'd like to introduce Ed Von Holtham. Ed will uh, present uh, the economic development goals, and uh, for those that are presenting today, the, the mic, you have to speak right into it. It's pretty, pretty directional, so, uh, so we might have to adjust that. Ed? Uh, over the past few years, the City Council and the Economic Development Committee um, have had several goals, most of them having to do with communication. Uh, the first thing we wanted to do is, uh, we're very proud of Arden Hills, I think uh, everybody is, and we wanted people to know that we were here. So we uh, uh, identified uh, eight places that we could put gateway signs and the first gateway sign has been installed, and the city council is planning five additional signs. We have a picture there of the sign. Uh, <clears throat> I think it's quite attractive, and that will help to emphasize the uh, community identity and the brand. Uh, the next thing we did, um, could we change the slide now? Thank you. Um, when the uh, Red Fox Road water tower is being painted, uh, the city uh, decided to put two uh, city logos there, and that will be seen by over 100,000 cars a day and will, again, help to identify Arden Hills and, uh, and our city. And uh, could you change the slide again? Thank you. Uh, but I think our biggest thing is business outreach because um, when we're we're talking to you guys. We know how important uh, the businesses are to Arden Hills. And uh, the uh, Economic Development Commission feels that uh, if we can communicate with the businesses and help keep those uh, lines of communication open um, between the business, the city, and the city council, uh, we'll be doing a, an excellent job. Um, that's what one of the, this presentation is state of the city it uh, we had one in 2011 we didn't feel a need in 2012 but there's been a lot of issues and uh, so we felt uh, we should have one this year and from the turnout it looks like that was correct uh, we also make sure that we try to have a a uh, presentation from the 
commission in the uh, newsletter, and where most newsletters we will have a business-related communication. Can you change the slide, please? Um, our uh, economic go goals, like I said, are business outreach, state of the city news, and uh, also to uh, communicate with the Shoreview Arden Hills Business Council. And I think if you want to talk to your elected official officials as a business person, this is an excellent venue. And the next meeting will be September 18th at uh, 7.30 to 8.30 in the Northeast Youth and Family Services on Lexington. I think you, you all know where that is. And next slide, please. Uh, we also, <coughs> I, I think I covered the business uh, articles and newsletters and articles. The other thing we worked on, and we can go to the next slide, um, was business visits, which uh, we've tried to hit every business in the city. I think Red Fox, Gray Fox will be for uh, 2014. Is that correct, Jill? Uh, yes, sir. Yeah, yes. So uh, we probably haven't got to you there, or the staff hasn't got to you and Red Fox, Gray Fox, but um, you're on the agenda, and we'll try to meet with you. And then we did the next slide, please. <coughs> and the city council accepted the uh, guiding plan for the B2 district on October 27th of 2008. We can turn this over to Brenda Holden, and she will continue on with this. So I just want to talk about the E2 business improvement. We're in the E2 zone right now, and it's, it runs along the railroad tracks over there, and it goes, but Cobb and Georgia Shoes and Caribou, they're not in the B2. It's just south of that. It goes all the way up to Harriet Street, which kind of cuts right behind Country Financial. And then we have the boundaries of Lexington and Snelling 51 is considered our B2 zone, which includes our improvement area. Um, the council accepted the guiding plan in 2008, and the, gu and the plan is mainly looking at a framework for long-term public and private improvements along County Road E. Um, please. What the guiding plan list was first, the long-term goals, was creation of the distinct and an, and an identifiable place. Um, there hasn't been any rhyme or reason, and and it, it just looks like we just stuck buildings up. We're we want to improve the vehicle circulation and be more receptive to bicycles and pedestrians, and we want to encourage redevelopment and private investment into the community. Uh, so we started a to plan a implementation plan and as part of that we went and got volunteers several people in this committee in, in this room were on the um, corridor advisory committee and we also had consultants there and and they were able to take the information given by the committee and kind of look at it and provide feedback so and then the consultants that we hired they also went and talked to many of the business one-on-one -on -one to f assess the needs what they think their issues were, what the traffic issues are, and what kind of what kind of improvements they wanted, and the cost associated with the improvements, because we all have to pay for it some way or the other. So the feedback from the business community indicated that the businesses wanted aesthetic improvements along the corridor, specifically repairs to the mediums, the sidewalks, and the driveways and the access points. The consultants found that there was an excessive number of access, curb cuts, driveways, and the extra wide center medium along it is very confusing to drivers and, and does pose a safety hazard. Um, businesses were concerned about the elimination of a driveway and the curb cut points, and they were opposed to the medium and other traffic devices. It was kind of funny because some people are really for a medium down the middle to help with traffic, but then it affects everyone's business, so they don't want the medium in front of their business, but they wouldn't mind it further down. The same with the <laughs> curb cuts. Let's get rid of some of the curb cuts, but not their curb cuts. So it's an interesting balance and challenge that we'll have coming forward. The, um, the guiding plan assumes that the land uses on County Road E will change over time. 
The city council believes that the land use changes should be market driven and the city shouldn't interfere in private development. Um, the redevelopment of the pod buildings into the Walgreens and former Holiday Inn McGuire's into the East Street Flats <laughs> are examples of the market driven reuse. Carroll Furniture, which has been abandoned now and is vacant, um, it, it, the taxes were paid by the bank, so the bank is now marketing it. And so we're hoping to hear if anyone is interested in using it. They did just put the new windows in and they are starting to maintain it a little better. So hopefully that will be marketed off the market and in somebody's hands. So if you know of anybody interested and in, uh, you reuse for Carol, let us know and we can contact them. Uh, the businesses are reluctant to support costly improvements. So, and I understand that, I, because just because you build it, it, they may not come. So we're going to start out in small increments and um, embrace the embrace that approach, and hopefully we can get more people down <coughs> here. Just because, well, once the traffic and the roadways are done being completed. Thank you. And so we're going to, based on the feedback from the corridor advisory committee and the business community, the implementation plan recommends improvements along E between 51 and Lexington. So we are going to reconstruct the damaged mediums. We are going to probably have a little more bicycle path. We're really going to white stripe it. Um, we're going to complete and repair the sidewalk system on the north and south sides of E and along a portion of Pine Tree Drive. We're going to install some pedestrian lighting and boulevard trees. We're going to restripe the roadway to narrow the center lane and make wider shoulders. And based on the business feedback, the construction is tentatively going to be in 2015 when they reconstruct that bridge over 51. So I don't know if you all know that they're planning on removing the bridge over 51 and re recreating that. Um, the council, we're going to be looking at the feasibility study on September 30th. I haven't seen it yet, but, um, but it will affect anybody in this area, so make sure you check it out in the agenda items. Go to our website on the agenda items and take a look at it on September 30th. Um, next, Mayor Grant's going to talk about the TCAP project. Thank you uh, for that presentation on uh, basically what is Main Street for Arden Hills. So now we're going to transition into TCAP, uh, the land to the north. The, the redevelopment of TCAP is a joint project between Ramsey County and the city of Arden Hills. In order to make that happen, we needed a, a separate governing body, and we created that. It's called the Joint Development Authority. And that Joint Development Authority consists of two city council members, uh, myself and council member Holden, uh, two Ramsey County Commissioners, uh, Commissioner uh, Blake Huffman and Rafael Ortega, and a, a chair who is an Arden Hills resident, uh, and that's specified in the organization documents, and that, that uh, the chair of the Joint Development Authority is David Sand. And David is also a former chair of our Planning Commission. Um, it's... it's uh, it's an interesting structure because our goals align so well between the county and the city. We want to return the property to productive use. We want to increase the tax base in Arden Hills and Ramsey County. We want to increase the number of jobs and the amount of, of commerce in our city. The Joint Development Authority will be responsible to review and approve all development proposals on the TCAP project. What's important to note, though, is that the city is responsible for developing the master plan. Ramsey County, uh, earlier this year, in entered into a fixed price remediation contract with Bolander and Sons. Uh, the site will be remediated to MPCA, that's Minnesota Pollution Control Agency, residential standards. So think of, think of that entire property, 427 acres, will be cleaned to a residential, livable, live on, live on the land uh, level of, of cleanup. At 427 acres, that is uh, not, well, it's, it's larger than the city of Lauderdale. 
if you were to consider the size. The city of Lauderdale is about 300 acres. This is a 427 acre site. Has no buildings on it, clean slate to do what we, uh, what we plan. Um, the resident, the cleanup includes removal of building foundations, parking lots, roads, and abandoned utilities. Um, well, the water treatment facility up there will stay in place. Uh, the Army is responsible for uh, groundwater remediation. Uh, they do pumping of water and recycling of water, and that will continue for about 40 years. Uh, site uh, work began uh, nearly immediately after the county, county purchased the property. Uh, currently, all but one of the abandoned buildings have been demolished, and as you can see on the slide, um, those buildings that you remember as being up there are now gone. Um, it, it's difficult to see because uh, the intersection of 10 and 96 is being reconstructed. You can't travel on that portion of 10 that you need to travel on to see the fact that the buildings have been removed. Uh, building 502, which is the green building directly north of the highway, uh, will remain up through, through the winter. Uh, that, that particular building has um, asbestos and other, other things that it's going to take a little bit longer for that building to be removed. But it will be removed by the spring of 2014. The entire remediation and demolition uh, project is scheduled to be completed by late uh, 2015. Uh, demolition materials are, are being carefully sorted for recycling and reuse. Uh, 6,185 tons of steel have been recycled. Four flatbeds of wood and wooden beams, and I, I understand that that is Douglas fir from the 1940s, so very valuable uh, wood, has been salvaged and removed uh, from the site. Uh, in terms of the railroad track, uh, 350 tons of steel track have been removed and will be reused, and I understand it's uh, for a railroad in southern Minnesota. At this time, approximately 35,000 tons of raw concrete and bituminous have been sorted on the site and are awaiting uh, crushing. Bolander estimates that the project, by project completion, 400,000 tons of bituminous and concrete will be recycled and reused for roadbed, foundation work, and other uses. And I'm, I'm told that this represents approximately half the total volume of debris that was removed from London after the Blitz. So. That's why it takes so long to clean up, clean up TCAP. There's a lot up there. Uh, under, under the terms of the Joint Development Agreement, or JDA as we call it, the city must complete the master plan for the TCAP site. Uh, there, although there have been previous master planning efforts, uh, those plans were drafted by private parties and uh, were never completed or approved uh, by the city. Uh, the city has a contract with Kim Lee Horn for the master planning, uh, also to do an er, uh, as part of that an AUAR, an Alternative Urban Area Wide Review, as well as to do regulations and policies on the use of the property. The master plan will be based on the city's existing vision for TCAP, as set forth in the Comprehensive and Zoning Plan, which calls for mixed use residential, retail, office, and light industrial development. According to the Joint uh, Powers Agreement, Ramsey County must also approve the master plan that Arden Hills develops. In terms of timeline, uh, Kimley Horn actually began May 1st of this year. The consultants are currently in the discovery phase. They're learning about the site, its opportunities, and its constraints. The master plan will be completed by June 2014. Uh, the regulations and policies will be a fast follower that should be completed by September 2014. And since the master planning process of the mid-2000s, there, there have been a number of changes that have, uh, that have been impacting uh, the site and the, the new master plan that's being developed. 
Uh, and those changes include the real estate and development market. It's been much different, it's much different now than it was during some of those previous plans. Uh, there is a loss of a third uh, access point along Highway 10. In the previous plans, as you went north on 10 from 96, before you got to 35W, there would be another off-ramp and interchange there, and that's, that's no, longer, no longer the case. So that, that's one of the constraints. How much traffic can you get in and get out of, of the property? The primary access points will be Highway 96 to the south and County Road H to the north. And there'll be a spine road, a major road that will connect those two access points through the property. Uh, the, a public involvement plan has been developed and approved uh, by the City Council for the TCAP project and also approved by the JDA. The City Council wants the community to have abundant opportunities to provide input and feedback on the plan. It's important that we get everyone's ideas. We want to collect all the best ideas from the best. As uh, the, the first public involvement event was a panel discussion and public engagement workshop on July 30th. The next uh, involvement event is an open house on Tuesday, September 17th from 5.30 to 7.30 at the Marsden Room at the Ramsey County Public Works Facility. So again, just, uh, just a few days from now, this coming Tuesday, September 17th from 5.30 to 7.30. Uh, this is an important meeting for residents and businesses to provide input prior to the first draft, and I'll emphasize first draft, of the master plan. Uh, the next open house will then be held in early 2014 when residents and businesses will be asked to provide feedback on the preliminary master plan. So even at that point, it's still preliminary. The City Council will also hold public hearing on the TCAP project, or, or we do hold a public hearing on the TCAP project, the first uh, council meeting of every month, which is held. The first council meeting is the second Monday of the month, and we have a, a public meeting where we invite anyone who wants to come and address the council with their ideas, their thoughts on TCAP. We've had uh, uh, a rather um, ra ra rather good uh, presentation on you know, environmental, just what do we want to do in terms of envir environmental. You know, do we want to be l kind of a lead certified development up there? And uh, so we've, we've received a variety of, uh, uh, councils received a variety of input. So, and also you can always uh, email or, or call your, your council members or any member of the Joint Development Authority if you'd like. So at this point, uh, you know, TCAP is certainly not the only development project. Council Member Holden talked about the, the B2 area. At this point, I'd like to invite uh, Council Member Ed Werner uh, to uh, present information on other current development projects. Ed? The first uh, subject I'd like to talk about is E Street uh, Flats and Shops. Uh, it's been uh, the former Holiday Inn, excuse me, I'll loosen up here in a bit, but the former Holiday Inn has been uh, converted. Uh, to uh, 75 units and uh, also 20,000 uh, 20, square feet of retail space, including uh, at this time uh, now bikes. Uh, I think it's important to note that uh, the original plans uh, uh, included over 100 units in the holiday section of the uh, uh, apartments. Uh, and after a number of go-arounds between the Planning Commission and the City of Arden Hills, we decided on a, a compromise to the 75 units. So far, uh, uh, there are a total of 18 students from the various colleges, uh, including Hamlin, Bethel, uh, University of Northwestern, University of Minnesota, and Century Community College. And, uh, There'll be common areas, there are common areas in there that include a fitness area, lounge, theater room, gaming room, and indoor uh, bicycle storage. And uh, if I could mention about the Now Bikes, they relocated uh, from, uh, I believe it's Shannon Square. And uh, I tell you, I uh, 
took my uh, our two bikes. Uh, we have a couple of Swin collegiates, and uh, tires were shot. And I went in there, and lo and behold, they uh, they had uh, tires for 40-year-old bikes. And well, my wife's been hounding me for years to get them on the road, and I got them on the road now. So uh, actually, they're selling pretty well on eBay. You know, they're old enough, so they got the chrome fenders and. And uh, I don't know if any of you have ever had them, but they were uh, the bike to have in the early 70s. Um, and the second area I'd like to talk about is the Lexington, Lexington Station. They're doing phase one. Uh, you know where the Blue Fox was, that was uh, torn down. Uh, this project uh, is gonna be a three phase uh, between the two existing buildings there. But phase one, um, um, is uh, going to be a multi-tenant retail center uh, right on the area of the, the Blue Fox site. There are long-term leases for the other two buildings, so this is going to take uh, uh, probably a good solid decade to, to get this into completion. Um, the same developer owns those other parcels south and to the west of phase one. Um, future plans call for reconfiguration of the buildings at uh, 1130 Fox Road, the redevelopment of 3771 Lexington Avenue, and the construction of additional office and retail. Uh, construction of the 15,000 square foot multi-tenant retail building is underway. If you've noticed driving by on Lexington, uh, the developer is negotiating with restaurant tenants for the North and South Bays and uh, the restaurants will have outdoor seating, which I think uh, Arden Hills could use a little more of. Um, access driveways along Lexington and Red Fox Road will be closed as part of the phase one. Um, and the cities of uh, Arden Hills and Shoreview and Ramsey County are discussing the possibility of future uh, lighting of the intersection of the south uh, target entrance. I don't know if any of you have ever pulled out of that south entrance onto uh, Lexington. Uh, it's a challenge. Um, next. Okay, the next is uh, Bethel University. Uh, uh, Bethel is growing, uh, it is outgrown space that it currently uh, leases at the Red Fox Business District. Uh, they've been there for a number of years. Um, in June, the city approved a zoning amendment that allows uh, higher education uses in the B2 zoning district of. Uh, uh, of uh, uh, Country Financial. Um, and the City Council um, is looking at, uh, since June, uh, the Country Financial and uh, Bethel have negotiated a deal in which Bethel would purchase the entire building and convert it uh, to 100% educational use, uh, administration and uh, classrooms by the year 2005, or 2025, a correction. Uh, the propose, proposal needs city council approval and uh, it will likely be uh, considered in October, uh, both by the planning commission and by the full city council. The next thing I'd like to talk about is Arden Village. The city originally approved a 55 unit workforce uh, housing development in uh, March of 2010. And uh, this project has been converted to uh, market development uh, in uh, late 2012, which required my, uh, minor modifications to the site plan and upgrades to the interior finishes. In the spring of 2013, construction did begun, begin on a 60-unit building, which includes uh, four uh, affordable units. And the last thing I'd like to talk about is uh, Presbyterian Homes on uh, Johanna Shores. Uh, construction has been going on since uh, 2011. Uh, 152 unit main building is nearly complete and 36 brown, brownstone units will be built in a future phase. Um, with this, I, uh, you may have noticed uh, several of these uh, development projects as you've driven around Arden Hills over the past year. You certainly have noticed that many transportation projects are underway. Uh, Councilman member Fran Holmes and uh, Ken Bernard uh, from MnDOT uh, will 
have information on the status of the current and future transportation improvements. We're having Wayne Norris speak with us today rather than Kent Bernard. Kent is uh, 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 not available, but Wayne, who is the area manager for the Twin Cities for the Minnesota Department of Transportation, is going to handle some of our road construction projects. As all of you are aware, as you're driving to and from work or to and from home, there's a lot of road construction going on. And um, I thought we'd have Wayne assist us bec because there's so much going on and Wayne knows exactly what's going on with the MnDOT project. So I'm gonna turn it over to Wayne and he's gonna talk about uh, the MnDOT pro pro uh, projects that you're uh, dealing with on a daily basis and then I'll come back and talk about some of our more local projects here in Arden Hills. Thank you, council member. Appreciate being uh, here this morning. Uh, on the first slide, we're talking about uh, Highway 10, uh, County Road 96 grade separation, which was a partnership between uh, MnDOT and Ramsey County. Uh, as you're well aware, uh, there's a lot of activity going out there, and it's still closed to traffic. Uh, we drove through there just the other day, and uh, the beams are up for the new bridge. They should be uh, out there framing for pouring the deck here soon. Uh, that project will be completed, as on the slide, this November, with work still proceeding in 2014 to wrap that project up. Uh, again, uh, that's a, a project that's a partnership between the uh, state and Ramsey County. The 694, what we call the Arden Hills project, which is 69410 and uh, 51 project, started uh, in uh, late uh, 2011, and we're scheduled to have that completed in 2013. There's some interesting uh, updates on that. Obviously, there's a ramp closure at Lexington uh, that's supposed to open up uh, by Monday, the 16th, but then the ramp from Lexington to go westbound actually will not open uh, until uh, probably uh, mid October. Uh, the schedule for completion of that ramp and opening to 694 westbound as well as US 10 northbound was to have been uh, October 11. But uh, construction folks have indicated that's not going to occur until November, late November of this year. Uh, again, uh, that project should be completed uh, and open to traffic. Uh, to follow up in year 2015, uh, there is a program landscaping project that goes along with that project as well. And we'll be following up and working with the city and the county on the details with that. County Road E, uh, that one is a complete bridge replacement. We begin uh, discussions not only with the city but with Ramsey County on replacement of that structure. Uh, there's also consideration for pet and bike improvements on that bridge, which uh, we will be working with the county to, uh, since it's a county road, we'll defer to the county and their negotiations and work with the city where the location of that facility should be. But we'll be uh, replacing that bridge in 2015. That's going to be out of service probably four to six months to take and replace that bridge because we have to go higher with the roadway and we'll have to do some work on the ramps and loops at that location. But it should be completed uh, by the end of uh, construction season 2015. The 35W96 interchange. Uh, MnDOT have programmed that as only a bridge replacement project, and we had about a million dollars programmed for that project to replace it actually in 2014. Obviously with the redevelopment efforts at the TCAP site and uh, the uh, need for additional capacity on that bridge at that location, we're working with Ramsey County uh, to develop an agreement where uh, we would fund a fully replaced new bridge at that location, uh, and the time frame we're looking at is 2015, and we're, we're in negotiations with the county to make that happen. Uh, the 
Tommy Road F Valentine Road Bridge is also scheduled for replacement. Uh, obviously, we have a lot of bridges going on here that are being replaced. And maybe before I go farther on, uh, if you visited the uh, North Central Projects website, we have a, a link there that links to all of these projects. And we'll have to coordinate how traffic gets through all these areas in especially 15 and 16. So we'll be developing that as we move along as well. But that bridge is scheduled for replacement in 2015. We would like to be able to get it done during the construction season without impacting the school uh, being open uh, in the spring and in, in the fall. And we're working with uh, New Brighton and Arden Hills on the pet bike facilities along that facility as well. Another bridge, this one is actually scheduled for 2015. Uh, our bridge office said we can actually move it to 2016, but that's really the end, it has to be replaced. Uh, we had that program for about $7 million. Uh, again, the county wants to uh, take lead on that, especially with the redevelopment efforts on the TCAP site. And we'll be working with the county on the details of that. Uh, reconstruction of that bridge and the approach roadways. Part of that also includes uh, County Road 10, US 10, and County Road H intersection, which the county has money to redo that intersection as well. So we'll be working with them to get that done in 2016 at the latest. Uh, uh, one of the issues we have are the structural integrities of both uh, County Road H and County Road 96. Uh, Another bridge, County Road E2 on 35W, uh, that was actually was scheduled for 2015. Uh, we're moving it to 2016, so, which, so we're not having all the bridges over 35W in this area closed at the same time. So uh, we're trying to facilitate having at least helping some of the traffic get from here to there, east to west across 35W. But that is a 2016 project. Uh, that one, if MnDOT will be the lead on the project, but we also are working with, with uh, New Brighton Arden Hills on the details of that project as well as the county. Thank you very much, Wayne. Appreciate the insight. And uh, Wayne will be around a little bit later when we have the questions, if anybody has any questions about the road construction, because the, obviously the bad news is we're all going to have to, every time we go someplace for the next two years till 2016, we're going to have to say, how am I going to get there? The good news is at the end of that, we'll have really good roads and we're gonna add to our pedestrian and bike trails. So it'll make our city more bikeable, more walkable because there's been a lot of issues with, well, I can go so far and then I gotta cross this bridge and you know, and so forth. So I'm gonna cover a few local projects that we're working on here. Um, in 2014, there's going to be the Lexington Avenue improvements. This is Lexington Avenue between 694 and County Road F. Because of there's going to be more traffic at the exit on Lexington, uh, the Lexington Avenue from 694, we're going to have a double left-hand turn at County Road F so that more traffic can turn left e more easily, uh, especially during the rush hour, and it'll, it'll be on both going north and south on Lexington. There will also be some new medians and um, there will be, most of the entrance and exits will be the same. The there'll be openings on the medium. There will be um, one uh, movement that will not be able to no longer be, it will be, you cannot, coming out of Gramsci, you won't be able to turn left onto Lexington, but that's um, the only difference uh, in the current movements there. For those of you here who are um, in the Round Lake Road area, we're going to be improving the roads over there. That will be, that's planned for 2014. We're working on the studies right now. Um, this will Im improve the, the road, the whole road in that area will be widened to an urban style roadway with concrete curb and gutter. And there will be also sanitary sewer and water and storm sewer improvements. With this project, the city will be periodically contacting those of you who are in that area to provide updates, important updates, because when the phone, the water, or the, the road is going to have to be uh, 
changed or turned off or whatever, we want to make sure that we don't interrupt the businesses. So we'll make sure that everyone is contacted and there's good communication so that you can keep doing your business as normal while that's going on. The last road improvement project is the Old Snelling Avenue improvement. A lot of people have asked about that. That's the area from County Road E2 down to uh, Trunk Highway 51. That, air, that road has, uh, we've been keeping it up with patches and repairs. The, the, um, the uh, shoulders are quite uh, in need of repair, and I think we're going to do some work on those just separate from the reconstruction of the project so we can keep the shoulders going. But um, this is going to be done after that bridge that we've been talking about on County Road E. That's the County Road E bridge. Once that closes, that's going to be a big project. And so we want to have a way for people to get um, the movement out to um, Trunk Highway 51. So that's going to be um, deferred a bit because, as Wayne had said, we want to make sure people can get around the city without, um, you know, headaches and so forth. So uh, as I said, uh, Wayne and the rest of us will be available for questions a little later on. But at this point, I'm really pleased to have the opportunity to introduce our former council member, Nick Tambell. He's going to speak on behalf of the newly created Arden Hills Foundation. Uh, Nick is on the board of the foundation. I know we have a lot of former elected officials here and um, people that used to be uh, officials in Arden Hills. And this is kind of a dream that we've had for a number of years to have a foundation for Arden Hills. So Nick's going to give us some um, insight on what's going on with the foundation. Good morning. I'm Nick Tambell, and uh, I'm a small business owner in the area for 23 years and decided to get back involved with Arden Hills in some fashion in July and became a board member for the Arden Hills Foundation. So here I'm going to share a little bit about uh, what's been created and some little wins that will help explain why a nonprofit was established for Arden Hills businesses and residents. So let's backtrack a bit. I've been trying to find out where this started and uh, actually this morning spoke a little briefly with Bev Apokowski and said, back in her mayor term is when it was really started to talk about a foundation, but not until the end of 2012 that it was formally filed and established as a 501c3. So it's been a long time coming to get to this point, and before this, there has been an old way of donating where the city would contact and you would um, you know, donate to the fall festival and things where the money was put to good use, but there was one little element missing, a very important element, and that was the, the tax deductible element. So now we have this new way of developing, of new way of donating, and that's uh, a few different ways that we can donate now. Number one would be giving to allocated categories. So consider parks and trails a category, or a festival of some sorts, or one of my favorite examples, an angel category, where we could pool funds and help support some children in the neighborhoods who would otherwise not have an opportunity to partake in after school activities. So that's one, so that's allocated categories. Another one would be designated funds. And is there another slide that has some images on with the, uh, yeah, this is a couple examples of some allocated categories, or pardon me, some designated ones. This first one is a uh, image of a sprinkler which is indicative across the street from Presbyterian Homes, that triangle parcel that was just completed. Presbyterian Homes donated money towards that sprinkler system through the foundation. So in return, they get the tax benefit, and the city and community by and large receives the benefit by having sprinklers keeping grass emerald green. The other one is a largemouth bass in the hands of a DNR representative. There was a group around Carth Lake who pulled some money to work on some water quality issues in the lake. So they, they gathered funds up to purchase 550 largemouth bass to interrupt food chain and help build water quality there. And I've been in contact with Gary Girding who helped set that up and he was really pleased on how that process worked. Uh, provided a real great avenue for them to channel their money, get a tax benefit, and benefit the community. Finally, there's an unallocated funds option where, you know, somebody would just give and it would be in the dictation of the foundation on how those funds would be used. 
So if there was a pot of money that was, you know, maybe a few hundred dollars shy or so, and a few more hundred that would be allocated on top of that to complete or do a task, that would be the, the liberty of the foundation to help in that fashion. As far as financials to date, I believe there's been about 10 donations totaling about $4,500. And the idea is to add a zero to that by the time we all leave today. So don't be the last one out the door. <laughs> Moving forward, in the next 30 days or so, the board will be meeting with the Northwest Youth and Family Services President, Jerry Hermaka, to collaborate on some vision and strategies to best satisfy our mission. So he has some very, uh, very great experience on this type of thing, so we're going to glean what we can from him. Also, one of the many tasks that we are working on include donation levels. So we're you know, a very new foundation. We're in the remedial stages of things. So figuring out how to do these donation levels is you know, kind of where we're at. So if you have any insights on that, there is contact information in the brochure. We'd love to, to hear some different strategies that you might have. But one that was tossed about was one example, a, couple's donation of $200 would be something where a couple in Arden Hills would donate to the foundation, be part of this category, and then we would wrap certain benefits around that or certain recognitions around how we donate. So to close, it was primarily with this group in mind, this group of people in this room right here, to revamp and recreate uh, a foundation so that we can allocate some donating and have some tax benefit by it. So please continue to give generously if you had in the past, but certainly not because I ask. I think giving is most impactful when a person does so out of will, will and want, never from pressure. If you feel so inclined today, there are board members here, there are board members here today who would be happy to receive a check or a wad of hundreds from you. Give now and save harassment later. And one more thing, it's not all about the dollar. If time is your gift, well, there's nothing more valuable than time. Thanks. All right. Uh, thank, thank you, Nick, uh, for that, that presentation. Uh, the Arden Hills Foundation, uh, I'd like to point out, is, is separate from the city. It was uh, founded by uh, a number of individuals who wanted to create a foundation for the betterment of the city. Uh, it's, it's coincidental that uh, two of the board members are our council members, so uh, myself and uh, council member Holmes and uh, three other residents uh, and, uh, and obviously uh, Nick Namble being one of those residents. So I'd, in, I'd encourage you to uh, consider uh, giving to the foundation. Uh, can be a lot of different causes. Uh, Emerald Ash Boar is uh, taking some of the trees in this area and maybe you want to uh, donate to uh, put a tree in a park or maybe you want to donate uh, for a park bench or, or any number of, of uh, reasons. Uh, <coughs> we'll go to a question and answer uh, session, but first of all, I want to thank Flaherty's Arden Bowl for hosting the event today. I certainly want to uh, thank the presenters as well as city staff for all of their work in, in the putting on this event. Uh, as you can tell, there are a lot of projects going on in the city. Uh, yes, there's, there's winter and there's road construction, and we certainly have plenty of road construction. But we also have a lot of projects that are, that are going on uh, development-wise, some of them very large like TCAP, some of them uh, much smaller, um, all of which are important to the city. Uh, Certainly this area with a B2 plan, you've got Lexington Station, you've got uh, the 60 unit uh, apartment complex up on County Road F. And I would like to clarify that it wasn't at market, it was at market rate. They're market rate apartments, uh, just like any other, other building. Although there are four units, I understand, in that building that are um, workforce uh, priced. Um, with that, uh, I'd like to open up the, the floor to questions. And each council member, by the way, is assigned a, a committee that they work with each year. So some of the questions I may uh, ask other, other council members uh, to respond. So at this point, are there any, any questions on what's going on in the city? 
Uh, the, the, the question was, with, with the increase in growth in the city of Arden Hills, are we going to get increased sheriff coverage? I, I think a lot of the development, and, and I guess I'm answering this from my perspective, obviously there are five council members, but uh, as you look at, a lot of it is, is redevelopment. You know, Lexington Station in, in Blue Fox is out and a new building is in. Um, it's, it's redevelopment. Uh, does, it, does it add to the city? Sure. Uh, incrementally, uh, perhaps not as much. Uh, the, the apartments on County Road F, okay, that, that's incremental growth. So there will be some incremental growth. Right now, uh, we are blessed with low crime rate. Uh, we have coverage uh, 365, 24-7. Uh, we have backup units as well for the city. I'm I'm not aware at this point that that uh, and, and I guess I can toss that out to the businesses and I guess we need to hear from you if you're experiencing an increase in crime then we need to know about that but at this point we haven't heard that if we if we look forward to the TCAP development of 427 acres that that would be a massive amount of of incre incremental growth and at that point um, that would have to be reassessed the build out of TCAP is expected to take 10 to 15 years, and it'll probably be closer to 15 years. So future councils will have to consider that, just you know what our needs are, but they'll have to make that decision at that, that point in time. So in, in the near future, I, I don't think so. But again, we need to hear from, we need to hear from the public and we need to hear from, from businesses. Let us know what you think and what you're seeing. The the question was one of are we going to get traffic uh, deputies in the in the interim here for some of the road construction projects and interestingly enough the sheriff is here today <laughs> so, <laughs> so uh, to, to answer your question part of our contract uh, includes uh, a a deputy a portion of a deputy which was added primarily for the 694 construction project to do traffic and the city has made a request um, uh, we were asked I don't know where our city administrator is at the moment but was asked to make that request to Ramsey County and I think that that's been done um, as of yesterday but I haven't heard a response but we we are aware of, of, of the issue yes oh yeah, on that particular case, we we awful. we did ask. Yes, yeah, especially for a two, especially the first two weeks, which were downright right. unbearable. Typically, traffic starts to reroute itself after a couple of weeks, but those those first two weeks were were very very difficult. That is true, and and we did ask. We also looked at you know this uh, during that period of time the the phasing of the lights and every uh, a number of options. Uh, I don't know if everyone was able to hear, but it was basically a question about the. The specifically about the apartments that are being built on That's County Road F, and and, and and also a more general question about traffic feasibility studies. Um, and I guess I would ask that our community development director respond to that. Okay, public works director. Uh, first of all, from a pedestrian standpoint, uh, there will be a sidewalk completed along County Road F, that, that apartment building. There will be a small piece that the city will need to complete uh, at at the western end, but we're planning for that. So the pedestrian movements have been dealt with. As far as traffic, when something like that comes in, the county, because it is a county road, we're involved in the planning process. So we look for the county in these cases to tell us what they need for additional traffic. Now they didn't ask for anything beyond what was happening with the MnDOT project at Hamlin, and then they have their project that was discussed that'll take care of the intersection of, of County Road F and Lexington. So on that particular project, that's what happened there. But any of these projects that come in, uh, we look for the county or MnDOT, if that's the case, to uh, talk to us about what they think is needed for traffic. Many times we require the developer to do a traffic impact study. I'm, I don't believe that was the case with the apartment building, but that was certainly the case with the East Street Flats project as that was going through the various stages. Uh, there was a number of traffic uh, studies that were done there. What the city actually does in these cases is the city hires a consultant ourselves to do the traffic impact study and then the developer pays for it. 
so we control who's doing the study and how it's being done? Uh, so there, there will be a, a, a sidewalk, uh, obviously, and, and these projects do have uh, traffic studies done with them, and it's important, I think, to note that there are city streets and there are county roads, and the, the city has an interest, the county has an interest, and we do work together with tra for traffic studies on, on those projects. Okay, actually there were, there were a couple of questions there. First one regarding Country Financial and, and Bethel, and the other being a question about County Road E, Lake Johanna Boulevard, and Old Snelling. Um, I'll take the last question first. Um, has it been talked about? Um, I, I, th I think at one point someone mentioned it. I don't know that it was ever talked about seriously. Uh, the question regarding Bethel, uh, potential potential per purchase of country financial uh, would that come off the tax rolls um, that depends if if they occupied a hundred percent of the building and they purchased the property then it would come off the tax roll if they did not or if they did not occupy a hundred percent of the building and sh essentially shared the building then no it would not come off the tax rolls so, and at, at this point, uh, just to, to recap, uh, some of you may be going, Bethel is, Bethel is doing what? <laughs> just to bring you up to date, Bethel has proposed to lease a portion of Country Financial. That, that building is uh, not fully occupied, and Bethel is looking to be a tenant there. Um, they came forward to the council for approval. Um, for a, a use permit on that property to operate. And at this point, the, the council approved that they can operate, and I, and I may get the number wrong here, but was it 26,000 square feet? Something like that, I believe it was 26,000 square feet. And I believe that building is 200,000 square feet. So they're oper operating a portion of it. Now, Bethel has come to the city and said, hmm, maybe we, maybe we would consider buying the entire building. So the council at this point has not had a chance to analyze that situation. Um, how does that fit in with the B2 district? Is it something we would consider? Uh, we'll, we'll have to take a look at that. Some of the things that, that we're doing are, are things, uh, as former Mayor Applegeski pointed out, are things that we've wanted to do for a long time. We've wanted to redevelop TCAP. That's been out there for at least 10 years. Uh, we've wanted a foundation. We were told at one point that it just couldn't be done, so we went out and did it. So uh, we, we are we are making some progress on some things that have been outstanding for for quite some time. So thank you for acknowledging that, and I want to thank all the businesses for coming today. You're you're an important and and vital part of our community, and also thank all the residents for showing up to hear about your community. I think it it says a lot. Uh, about our community to host something like this and have have people show up who are interested. So uh, if you want to contact a council member, our email addresses are on the, on the website as, as well as our phone numbers. Uh, and I'd encourage you to check out our, our new website uh, as of about a year ago. It's been new and revamped. I don't know if you've been there, but uh, check it out. And cons as uh, former council member Tamble pointed out, uh, please feel uh, free to make a donation to the Arden Hills Foundation if you so uh, are so inclined. So with that, thank you. Thank you for coming, and have a great day.